In this video, I will discuss the organic chemistry questions of J.E. Advanced 2013, Paper 1. In our first question, it has been asked that Ki in acetone undergoes SN2 reaction with each of these four compounds and we have to, we have to check the rates of the reaction, means we have to compare the rates of the reaction. Now to compare the rate of SN2 reaction, we have to remember two major things. One is how crowded the electrophilic center is and if there is any nearby group which is actually increasing the electrophilicity of the electrophilic center. Now we will check all these four compounds one by one. First we have the compound P which is methyl chloride that means it is very less crowded. It has three hydrogens and a chlorine. The chlorine will be the living group and iodide will be the attacking nucleophile in this case. So the reaction is of course as it is shown here or as it is given in the question it is an SN2 substitution reaction. So the compound P is less crowded but there is no nearby group which can increase the nucleophilicity of the central carbon atom. Okay, Let us go for Q. In case of Q, we can see that the center, the electrophilic center is quite crowded because of the two nearby CH3 groups. So it is like this. So we have one hydrogen only, the iodide is going to attack from this side and due to this two bulky CH3 group, the attacking side or the electrophilic center, the carbon is quite crowded. So, the, so this kind of SN2 reaction will not be favorable in this center and there is no such group which can increase the electrophilicity of the central carbon. If we check R, R is relatively less crowded, it has only two protons connected and yes the chlorine which is the living group and the iodide will attack to this center and the chlorine will go away. Here also we have one uh, bulky group, not very bulky, but but one uh, allyl group here attached with the carbon center, which will not help in any way. I mean, it is not going to increase the electrophilicity of this central carbon. If it is a SN1 reaction, then of course, after the formation of the positively charged carbocation, that means if it is an SN1 reaction, the carbocation will form, which will be like this then this will be easily stabilized by this double bond here. But in case of an SN2 reaction, no carbocation intermediate will form, hence the double bond will not help in any way. Now if we check S, we have a benzene ring which is bulky but far away from the electrophilic carbon. So this is the carbon which has only two proton and is the electrophilic center because chlorine is the living group. So now the iodide will attack this carbon and the electrophilicity of this carbon is actually increased by the presence of the nearby keto group. So keto group is an electron withdrawing group so it will increase the electrophilicity of the central carbon which will make the SN2 reaction much more easier as well as the crowding here at this center is lesser because it is only connected with two protons and one carbonyl carbon. So, so if we compare now, in this case, in case of S, we have two effect. One, the crowding is relatively lesser compared to Q and also the nearby keto group is increasing the electrophilicity of the central carbon. So it will have the highest rate for SN2 substitution. Next will be our P which is very less crowded although there is no group which can increase the increase the electrophilicity of the central carbon but still as there is no crowd near the carbon so p will react at a faster rate and then comes r r is this one so although the crowd is less because uh, there is two proton and one allyl group connected 
although there is nothing no group which can help to increase the electrophilicity of the central carbon but still due to the lesser crowding it will come next and at last we will have q because in case of q the crowding is pretty high because of the two methyl group two bulky methyl group will increase the crowding of the electrophilic carbon and also there is no group near to the electrophilic carbon which can increase the electrophilicity of this central carbon hence it will come last so the sequence will be s will have the highest reaction rate then p then r and r and at last q in our next question it has been asked that the compound that does not liberate carbon dioxide on treatment with aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution is these following so we have to choose the correct option from these four different options so now to understand that why carbon dioxide is released um, from a reaction of sodium bicarbonate and any other compound uh, we need to know the mechanism of the reaction so suppose we have a carboxylic acid like RCOOH and we are taking sodium bicarbonate so here actually the bicarbonate ion first sodium bicarbonate is going to dissociate as sodium plus and bicarbonate minus and this bicarbonate anion is going to abstract one proton from the carboxylic acid so the resulting compounds will be like this RCOO minus with a counter cation Na plus and H2CO3 of course H2CO3 is going to dissociate as H2O and carbon dioxide so we will see the effervescence of this carbon dioxide so when there is a carboxylic acid of course we will get the effervescence of carbon dioxide in presence of sodium bicarbonate when there is a carboxylic acid group present so in these options we have benzoic acid of course benzoic acid is something like this a benzene ring connected with a carboxylic acid group so we have a carboxylic acid here a benzene sulfonic acid is very acidic in nature so benzene sulfonic acid is like this so 3 H and a salicylic acid so all of this three compound has a very acidic proton available this one and let me correct this one here yes so we have very acidic protons here we have three acidic protons in respective three compounds but if we take phenol we will see that although there is a OH group and there is an available proton but this proton is not enough acidic and if HCO3 which is not a very strong base it cannot abstract it cannot abstract this proton from the phenol so this reaction will not give any result so if H2CO3 is not formed then obviously carbon dioxide will also not form so the first step of the reaction is the abstraction of proton by HCO3 which is not happening in case of phenol so phenol is the compound which will not give effervescence of carbon dioxide in presence of sodium bicarbonate so D is the answer we have here among the four option we have to decide which is the proper hyperconjugative stabilities for tertiary butyl cation and 2-butene so I have already drawn the structure of 2-butene and tertiary butyl cation first let us start with the tertiary butyl cation we can see that this carbon the central carbon is bearing the positive charge and it has an empty p orbital so this p orbital so I am shading it with red 
it is actually an empty p orbital and due to the presence of this empty p orbital this is bearing the positive charge so now to stabilize this empty p orbital or to stabilize the carbocation there must be some hyperconjugation hyperconjugation means delocalization of sigma electrons which is which is there because of the bond because of the sigma bond between carbon and hydrogen so we have like nine sigma bonds because we have nine hydrogens so we have nine adjacent ch sigma bonds to the carbocation so this all this nine adjacent ch bond may participate in the hyperconjugated stabilities so actually this sigma bond will break like this and will delocalize the sigma electron towards the empty p orbital of the central carbon so here the delocalization is due to sigma to p empty because the p orbital which is taking part in this hyperconjugation is empty so we have a sigma to p empty donation now let us look at the two butene structure in two butene we can see we don't have any empty or empty pi orbital because it is forming a pi bond in between and both of this p orbital is having a single electron and they are forming the pi bond then how how the sigma bond can be used to stabilize the system or can be participating in the stabilization of the system of course when it is a hyperconjugation then a ch sigma bond must be included or must be must be taking part in some manner along with the sigma bond there must be something else which is going to receive the electron from the sigma bond so ch sigma bond is always the donating part and there must be something which is receiving in the previous case we have seen that the empty p orbital of the carbon is actually the one which is receiving that sigma electron but in this case we can see there is no unfilled electrons uh, sorry unfilled orbital which can take the sigma electron but yes although i am saying that there is no unfilled orbital but there are some unfilled orbitals still present in the system if we look here although there is no pi orbital available but pi star orbital that is anti bonding pi orbital is completely empty so the sigma electrons can be donated to the anti bonding pi orbital that means pi star orbital so here the stabilization may occur due to the donation from sigma to pi star orbitals that means option a where sigma to p empty and sigma to pi star electron delocalization this can happen or this is the kind of delocalization which will take place to stabilize the two species that is tertiary butyl cation and 2 butene in this question we have to decide which among the following compound will be aromatic that means among p q r s which one will be aromatic or which r will be aromatic so before knowing or before going to attempt the answer or attempt this question we must know that what is aromaticity so there are three crucial point about aromaticity first is uh, the system must be a cyclic system so cyclic second planar third 4n plus 2 pi electrons must be available so n could be any any whole number so these three criteria if a system uh, fulfill these three criteria then the system will be aromatic now let us check all these three all these four compounds means after the reaction what is going to be the four compounds so we have first this one we have a chlorine attached here if it reacts with alcl3 which is a lewis acid is going to take this chlorine and will 
hit something with with a positive charge here so this is a kind of cyclic system obviously and it will be planar because all the three carbons three H carbons are sp2 in nature that means it will be a planar system and the number of pi electrons here is 2 one from this carbon another from this carbon so two pi electrons are there and two pi electrons means if we if we keep n equal to 0 then 4n plus 2 it fulfills this three three criteria that means it is planar it is cyclic it is planar and 4n plus 2 pi electron where where n is equal to 0 so yes so this one p is aromatic what about r or let me check q first so we have this pentagonal system and we are using sodium hydride sodium hydride is a very strong base so so actually i cannot just put the negative charge here because hydride ion is going to release after the dissociation of sodium hydride so like this so sodium hydride will form na plus and h minus this h minus will work as a base and will take one of the two protons so it will form something like this so we will have a negative charge here and this negative charge is going to be a part of this aromatic a part of the cyclic system the system is cyclic two it is planar because the negative charge will remain in a p orbital of the sp2 hybridized carbon atom so this will be planar and the number of pi electron is here 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 2 pi electrons are there in the negative charge so 4n plus 2 pi electrons where n is equal to 1 so if you keep n equal to 1 then it will be 6 4 n plus 2 pi electron 6 and we have 6 pi electron here so this one is also aromatic now what about the other two systems so let us just erase this and I will draw the structure of R the structure of R is a kind of synthesis of pyrrole so we have this thing as the starting material and we are reacting it with ammonia so ammonia has a lone pair which is going to attack any of these two ketones so let me take OH here CH3 and NH2 in the next step this NH2 is going to attack the other ketone so intramolecular nucleophilic substitution kind nucleophilic addition kind of reaction so we have a OH here and already a CH3 here next if we heat it then two molecules of water will go out so OH and H here is another OH and a H from here So after after this we will get a kind of compound which is we all know pyrrole and pyrrole is an aromatic compound because because it has six pi electrons one two three four and two from the lone pair of nitrogen so six pi electrons it is a cyclic system and of course all all the all the participant atoms are sp2 hybridized so it is a planar system so all the three criteria of aromaticity is fulfilled so compound r will also be an aromatic compound what about compound s 
it is a seven membered ring one two three four five six seven so we have a double bond o here and apparently uh, if we check this compound this is not aromatic because it is not a kind of having the enough number of electrons so we will add HCl and now we will check now we have a positive charge inside the ring yes, so we will have OH and positive charge here now let us check so we have a cyclic system one cyclic two planar because all the carbons here are sp2 hybridized so it is a planar system we have the positive charge in the empty p orbital and now what about the number of electrons now we have one two three four five and six we have six pi electrons that means four in plus two pi electrons where n is equal to one so yes all the three criteria of aromaticity is fulfilled so compound s is also aromatic in nature so all these four compounds that is p q r and s are aromatic in nature in this question we have to predict the product p and then we have to say that how many carboxylic acid groups are there in the product p so first we need to know the structure of p that means we have to go through all these three steps so we'll take this starting material and do the first step the starting material is an anhydride so in presence of h3o that means acid catalyzed hydrolysis will just break the anhydride linkage and will form a dicarboxylic acid like this and if you see the structure of the dicarboxylic acid you can see that it is a beta dicarboxylic beta keto dicarboxylic acid i mean there are two keto groups just beta to the position of the two carboxylic acid groups so we know that beta beta keto acids are very easy to decarboxylate that means carbon dioxide will easily leave the system and the two carboxylic acid groups will be just gone in presence of a little bit of heat and we will get this diketone here next step if we do a ozonolysis we have only one double bond so in presence of ozonolysis condition that is o3 and h2o2 this double bond will break and the two two carbons which is on the two edge of the double bond will get a carboxylic acid group each so the final compound that is compound p will have this structure with two carboxylic acid groups in this question we have to deal with the structure of a peptide a tetrapeptide which is formed due to the reaction of four amino acids the question is a tetrapeptide has carboxylic acid group on alanine this produces glycine, valine, phenylalanine and alanine on complete hydrolysis. For this tetrapeptide, the number of possible sequence with amine group attached to a chiral center is. So there are two things that we have to keep in mind. One, the carboxylic acid group is with the alanine and the amine group must be attached with a chiral center. That means we need to know the structure of the four amino acids. So I have already drawn the structure here you can see that except glycine all the other amino acids are chiral. So we can keep any of these three amino acids in the amine end because according to the question amine group attached to a chiral center. So the amine group of the peptide could be either valine or phenylalanine. Why not alanine? Why not alanine? Because alanine must be in the carboxylic acid group it is also a part of the question it is also one of the criteria carboxylic acid group on alanine that means we have two restriction one the amine side of the peptide will not have glycine it will have either valine or phenylalanine and the carboxylic acid side of the peptide will have alanine that is for sure that is already said or given in the question so let me just 
make a sequence like this ella at this end and let, let's take valley in this end and i can take just glycine here and phenylalanine here so this is a sequence which fulfills all the criteria given in the question again i can keep valine here i will just change the position of phenylalanine and glycine so again it is fulfilling all the criteria so this could be one of the sequence now i will change valine with phenylalanine because phenylalanine is a chiral amino acid i can keep it here so i will keep valine here and glycine next to valine and at the carboxylic acid end i will keep alanine so this could be another possible sequence in the next sequence i will keep phenylalanine in the beginning and i will replace the position of glycine and valine like this okay so these are the four possible sequence which can be which can be made according to the criteria given in the question so these these the four possible sequence of primary structure with amine group attached to the chiral center so this is the amine end and alanine attached to the carboxylic acid end so four is the number of possible sequences if you have liked my video please click the thumbs up button as well as share the link with other people and for more videos please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon most importantly please comment below about your needs related to chemistry so that i can make more videos on several other topics